everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So today's video is going to be something that's a little bit, um, not different because I've done these sorts of videos before, but what I'm hoping to start doing is releasing every Sunday evening. So this should be released on a Sunday evening. I'm hoping that I managed to get it edited. And what I'm hoping to do is start filming almost like a chatty sort of Sunday evening sewing catch up where I talk about the things that I've done that week related to sewing. Um, you know, if I've got any projects planned for the following week, I'll share that. And maybe, you know, if I've done any um, twirls of patterns or anything like that, I'll talk about that. So this is going to be my first of my Sunday sewing catch ups. And I think that's what I'm going to call it unless I come up with any better idea for a, a title for a video, but I'm sure I won't. Um, so before I get started on sun, my first Sunday sewing catch up content, I thought I'd let you know what I'm wearing. And I shared photos of this outfit over on Instagram as part of the, I'm probably gonna get this in the wrong order, but the snip, snap, sew, or the sew, snap, snip, I can't remember which order it's in, but anyway, it's a challenge by the lovely Sarah, who is um, over at Like So Amazing. I'll put in an image of what the actual, um, hashtag is and the challenges but basically we're being encouraged to get out and about um a little bit out of our comfort zone I guess um and take some photos that are different to our usual um taking photos at home or in the garden or whatever it's you know wherever you have normally been taking your photos so I'd planned to go out on a bike ride with my daughter um so we got out on our bikes and I happened to be wearing this outfit which I hadn't shared properly um and I'll stand up in a second so you can see what it looks like and I'll put in an image um, but it was the perfect opportunity to just be a little bit more creative with taking photos. So she was my director, she was telling me what to do on the bike and then she was snapping lots of photos and we ended up with some really silly but fun photos and it was lots of fun taking photos together too. So it is the I Am um, Joy top made in this really fun watermelon cotton poplin that I got from Fabric Godmother. And I made this as part of the um, fruit salad sewing challenge that was over on Instagram. That's now finished, but the hashtag is still going. Um, and then I've got it on with my Make with Mandy bulk collots. And I really like them. They've got this pleat down the front. They've got some really lovely pockets, flat fronted waistband, and then it's elasticated at the back. And they're just really comfortable. If I stand up, you can see, they, there's my knees. They stop just below the knee. Uh, slightly wide-legged but not massively wide-legged um, um, they're really comfortable and they were just the perfect thing to chuck on for a bike ride because it made cycling really easy so I just wanted to share that um, so this week it's been half term which has meant I've had quite a lot of extra time to do some sewing um, I didn't have a huge amount of school work to do and school was closed so I couldn't actually get in to sort out my classroom or tidy up like I would sometimes um, I had a few things to do with reports, editing um, and some filing that I needed to do. So a lot of the time in the evenings I was able to do some sewing which was really exciting and I did manage to get a couple of things sewn up. I'm not going to go into detail in this video about the patterns but I'll just share the fabrics and hold up what I've got sewn up because I, I will talk in more detail when I do my June or my May makes um, vlog because some of these were made in May and some of them were made in June. This one I've already shared pictures of, but it is a Tilly in the Buttons Lyra made in this gorgeous marble print fabric. I just adore that fabric. So yeah, I made another Lyra, but I didn't add the ruffle on the end, so it just stops at my knee, and I think that's gonna be perfect for school. This cotton poplin fabric feels really soft for a cotton poplin, and this was from um, Faye Studio Jepson. I don't know if she's got any left. She might have a tiny amount left. So if she does have any left, I'll link it down below for you. But I just love that marble print. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then I have sewn up the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress, and I've decided to batch cut and batch sew two dresses at the same time. Uh, which was a bit of a gamble because I didn't do a twirl. But looking at the pattern, you've got elastic at the front, which creates these gorgeous gathers. So I knew that it would be quite roomy on the front anyway. And you've got this um, waist channel, which you create a drawstring for. So again, I knew across the waist and the hips, there'd be a little bit of ease. Um, so in terms of fit, I wasn't too worried. So I just went for it and I sewed up two. Um, when I was back to sewing, I did have to keep changing the thread because one is blue and one is green. Um, 
So I'm not sure if I actually ended up saving any time whatsoever, but I definitely saved time by batch cutting. And I've got plans to do some batch cutting today so that I've got projects already cut out ready for the next couple of weeks. So I've made one in this gorgeous blue floral fabric. And this was a viscose twill that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. I just love that color, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then I made the other one in just a viscose that I got from Sumi Sunshine. And again, I just love this color, they're both florals. This is a green background, but then it's got these tiny pink flowers. They're absolutely beautiful. And I love green and pink together. I think it's such a lovely color. So yeah, you've got this elasticated detail at the front, which creates these lovely gathers. And then the back, you've got a yoke. And again, that creates lots of lovely gathers in the back. So you've got some really lovely shaping in the dress. You've got this gorgeous little ruffle on the um, shoulder. And then the sleeves, you can play around with the length. So I decided to stop them here. Similar length actually to this um, I Am Joy top. And then it's gathered into elastic and it creates this gorgeous volume. So beautiful. And then for both versions, I added the ruffle on the bottom. Because for me, without the ruffle, it's just a tad too short. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple of summer dresses now for work. And I will wear these to work um, as well as just out and about when I'm out with my family or friends. Um, and then I've already shared pictures of this one, but I made another Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress because I absolutely adore that pattern. It's definitely like, I'm just turning it from inside out, it's definitely like wearing secret pyjamas. And again, this beautiful fabric was from Sumi Sunshine. Just absolutely love that blue and green together. Blue and green's another combination which I absolutely adore. Um, I went full on maxi for this one and I did add the ruffle on the bottom. And then I did my usual hack of not doing a belt, but just putting ties in um, for that. And it's just absolutely beautiful. I've worn it already and it just feels, this is a viscose jersey, so it just feels really snuggly and soft. And I just absolutely adore it. Um, this one I won't wear to work because it's maxi length and I'd probably end up falling over or the children would end up tripping on it. So that one will just be saved for when I'm out and about with friends or my family. And then the final thing that I got sewn up was some yanters. So um, this is a Helen, Helen's Closet um, pattern and it's the yanter overalls. And I don't know why I've never made these before. Um, and then I've got this gorgeous corduroy fabric from Hey So Sister. I just love the olive sort of colour with these pinks. Again, I've got quite a lot of pink that I've been sewing with, which I absolutely love. So yeah, I just made some yanter overalls. Um, you sh the instructions explain how to put a button and do buttonholes, but I decided to get some um, what they call dungaree uh, fastenings, so that's how I've chosen to finish mine. Um, the weather's got quite warm now, so I'm not quite sure when I'm going to wear these, but I just absolutely adore them. I think they're really fun. Um, yeah, one thing which I'm not quite sure why this has happened is to do with the pile of the fabric. I don't know if you can see on the back. Um, some of the corduroy, you can see there's, there's like the white showing through and I'm not quite sure why. Um, you can see it quite a lot on the back, like on the pocket and here. There's a lot of top stitching involved, so I don't know whether it's where I've done top stitching. Because you can see it on the pocket on the front as well. So I'm not quite sure why that's happened, um, but I still love them and I'll still wear them lots and lots and lots. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to wear them at the moment because it's got quite warm which I am not complaining about at all. I've been desperate for the sun to come out. So that's what I've been sewing up this week. Um, I wouldn't normally get all of that sewn in a week. It's just I've had half term and I'm going back to work very soon. So today is going to be cutting out lots of projects so that I've got a few to dip into over the next few weeks. Um, and next weekend, it's the virtual um, sewing weekend with the fold line. So I'm really hoping to get a couple of projects sewn up next weekend. Um, although I'm going to be busy because next weekend it's um, sort of the weekend before my birthday. So I've got plans with friends and then I've got a week and it'll be my actual birthday a week on Monday. Um, and then the following weekend we've got market and I'll be doing stuff with my family as part of my birthday too. I do like to eke out my birthday. I like to um, at least get two weeks, if not a whole month of my birthday. Um, I don't know if anyone else is like that, but I do love to eke it out as much as I possibly can. And it is fun actually um, being a teacher and having a birthday because the kids, especially the, the children that I teach, because they're so little, they get really excited about a birthday, especially a grown up's birthday. Um, and I always convince the children in my class that because I teach in reception that I am always going to be five. Um, so they genuinely believe at the moment that all the teachers that have a birthday, the grown ups that work in 
um, in my class and definitely the, the year group that I work in, all the grown-ups that have a birthday are turning five because you can only be four or five if you're in reception. Um, so it's always fun for them to sort of believe that I'm turning five. So today I'm also hoping, and I have got this cut out already, but I'm going to make a start on my um, Makebox & Co bunny. So I've got the Betsy bunny doll. So I've cut out all of the pieces and I'm going to have a go, hopefully. I'm hoping it won't take too long, although it does look quite fiddly and I'm a bit worried. I'm not worried, I'm a bit nervous about the hands st st stitching because if I get the nose and the eyes wrong, it's just going to look a little bit silly. Um, but yeah, I've cut out all the pieces. Um, and what I didn't realise, um, it's only when I've actually sat down and read the booklet, but you get all of the pattern pieces. Let me see if I can show you. You get the pattern pieces and they're all on some sheets and then you cut them out. But what I hadn't realised until it came to cutting out the fabric is the seam allowance isn't included um, when you cut out the, um, the pattern pieces. So when I trace that onto my fabric, I need to make sure, or when I cut out my fabric, I need to make sure that I include, and um, it's a um, 0.75 centimetre. So let me just double check. Yeah, it's a 0.75 centimetre seam allowance between each shape. So I just need to make sure, I haven't actually cut out the fabric yet, that's a job to do today. And then hopefully I can start sewing um, and create my lovely little bunny. So that's what I'm hoping to do um, later on today. I'll definitely get the pattern pieces cut out and perhaps start constructing because um, it looks quite straightforward. And there are lots and lots of really brilliant instructions. They break it down really well. So it's, these are all instructions, so many, um, that give you lots and lots of top tips and things. It does look quite, when it, when it gets towards like the legs and things, it does look quite fiddly. So I am going to take my time with this. I want to make sure, um, oh, it just looks super cute. I just want to make sure that I do it justice and I'm really excited about sewing that up. So we'll see, that's the little bloomers. They just look adorable. Um, so that's one of my projects. And I think that would be a really nice thing to start today and then have to, to do like a little bit each day next week when I do go back to work. Um, and then the other day we ended up going to Kingston. Kingston is um, a local town to me and they've got fabric land and I haven't been in fabric land for a couple of years. Well, since the, before the pandemic, um, because it is quite, um, Kingston's quite busy. So we do have to really plan when we're going to go. And normally we get there like really early so that we can try and avoid traffic. So I haven't been for ages because it gets really, really busy. Um, my eldest is autistic and she finds shopping quite overwhelming so we do have to really plan it quite carefully um but anyway we ended up going the other day because i needed to get a few bits for school um we're transforming we've got an outdoor classroom that we're transforming into a stage so i needed to get some fabric for the backdrop um so that was my excuse to go to fabric land and whilst i was in there it was very good i only got one piece of fabric and it was this beautiful viscose floral and I just love that green um it sort of looks quite um vintagey I guess I don't know let me hold it up it's a viscose it was like four pounds a meter or something um it hasn't been in the wash yet but I will pre-wash it it's got lots of movement it does look quite see-through you can see my rainbow lamp behind there it's nice and floaty um, and when I was in Kingston, I popped into Zara and I was really inspired by a children's dress that I saw. Um, it was a children's dress. It was a summer dress, but it had contrast fabric, which was quite similar to this. So it was like a floral print, but then with a plain print. So that's what inspired me to get this fabric. So I'm hoping to recreate a similar dress, um, one for Lola and one for me. The reason I say Lola is because Lola absolutely loves this fabric. Ruby has chosen something completely different, which I'll turn into a dress or t-shirt or shorts for her. Um, so yeah, the dress had a contrast floral fabric and a plain fabric. So I had to look in my stash and I've got some chambray left from making these culottes. Um, and I think this chambray will go really nicely with the ditzy floral. So I'm hoping it had sort of a panelled skirt with ruffles on and it had an exposed ruffle. So I'm going to take the indigo and then just play around with the, the skirt piece and see if I can make some um, sort of narrower ruffles, but have maybe four or five ruffles on the skirt and then think about what the top's going to look like. Um, but using the contrast, here would be this fabric and then the next here would be that fabric. 
I need to do a little bit of a play around with that, have a look at my patterns, have a look at patterns I've got for Lola, and then just work out the best way to construct that. But that's an idea that I've got sort of whirring around in the back of my mind, um, and I'll have a little think. That's not something that I'm going to rush into, because I want to make sure that I get it absolutely right um, before I start sewing it up. But I will definitely start sketching um, and just getting out some of my patterns and having a little think about what's going to work really well for that. But I just wanted to share that beautiful fabric with you. And then I've got a stack of fabrics on the floor next to me, um, which are things that I'm planning to do over the next couple of weeks, which I thought I'd share my plans with you. Um, so they are fabrics that I've shared before. This crocodile fabric I've had in my stash for absolutely ages and I've got a friend whose daughter just had a little boy. So I'm going to turn this into, I'll just hold it closer, it's got these gorgeous crocodiles all over it, like neon crocodiles. So I'm going to turn this into a matching set for her grandson. So I'm going to use the Poppy and Jazz strawberry sweatshirt and the tangerine trousers. And then there's the Petite Pegs um, teeny beanie hat. So I'm going to make a little hat probably just the tie knot hat and then um, some trousers and a sweatshirt using this fabric. And I'm really excited to finally um, use this fabric because I think it's been in my stash for about three years now. Um, it's a, I want to say it's a ponty. I think it's quite a lightweight ponty fabric, which is perfect for children's clothes because it's quite hard wearing. So I'm going to stick that in the wash so it can be pre-washed um, and then I can get that cut out. And um, that'll be a nice straightforward project because I can mainly sew it on my overlocker. Um, and I love sewing baby's clothes because it's quite a quick project, but quite satisfying at the same time. Um, and then I've got this um, sateen fabric that came in the latest uh, Fabric Godmother Dream wardrobe box, which I shared in my last um, like sewing catch up video. Um, and this is gorgeous. It's got pink sort of flowers all over it and then green background. I know it's a backdrop background. It's a cotton sateen, tiny, tiny little bit of stretch. Now, um, I'm not going to use this for the pattern that came in the box. I'm going to use some different fabric for the pattern that came in the box because I want to twirl the pattern and practice doing the shearing. So this is going to become the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress. And I'll pop an image of what that looks like. Um, I absolutely love the Davenport dress. I might see if I've got it so I can show. Oh, it might be here actually. Um, so this is definitely going to become a Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress. So this is what the Davenport dress looks like. I've printed it in black and white, so it's a bit tricky to show really. Um, let me show you the line drawing. It's got um, these gorgeous shoulder ruffles. And then the neckline here, you've got like you attach a facing and then that facing becomes the elastic channel. And then you got all these gorgeous gathers because of that. It's got pockets. You can do um, a longer sleeve that's gathered into elastic and then you get this cute little ruffle. Um, it's got a drawstring casing and then you create the drawstring. And then it's got this ruffle here. Um, I would say you do need the ruffle unless you're going to extend the skirt length because it is very short without the ruffle. Um, that's just personal preference. Um, in terms of sizes, oh, it's also, I should say, it's got a yoke on the back, which I think is a really lovely finish um, because it gives a really neat inside finish too. And then the back piece is gathered into that yoke. Um, so in terms of sizes, it comes in an extra small, which is a bust 32 to 33 inches, waist 24 to 25 inches and hips 34 to 35 inches. Um, and then it goes up to a 7X, which is a bust 59 to 60 inches, waist 52 to 53 inches, and then hips 62 to 63 inches. Um, the straight sizes extra small to extra extra large are designed off of a block with a BC cup size, and then the plus sizes 1X to 7X are designed off of a block with a CD cup size. And then the hem, sorry, I'm getting my words in a muddle, the hem hits above the knee. Um, so it's a pullover dress with a slightly loose fit that's brought in at the waist with the drawstring. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, let's see if I can find some information about, here we go. In terms of fabric recommendations, it's designed for woven fabrics and it's suitable for light to midweight fabrics. Fabrics like cotton lawn or linen will make it a great dress for spring and summer. And if you want it to be a bit fancier, it can be sewn from a silk or something with a bit of drape. You do need elastic for the neck piece and then the, the cuffs um, and then you create your own drawstring um, using the same fabric or you could use a contrast fabric that would look quite cool. So this is definitely going to become the Davenport dress 
And then I've got another fabric um, which came, I'm going to share in a fabric haul, which I'm going to turn into the Davenport too. Um, I think it's going to become a really easy dress to throw on in the summer when it's really warm. It's got some really lovely um, style details which make it a really cute dress too. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with that fabric. And then I shared this fabric in, I think it might have been my last like chatty video. Um, I got a bundle from Felicity Fabrics. They've started doing bundles of fabric, like one meter. I don't know if they do two meters, I can't remember. They definitely do one meter and three meter bundles. They probably do do two meter bundles. Anyway, I got a one meter bundle. So I got this gorgeous pink cotton dobby fabric. But then I also got this beautiful floral um, just a cotton fabric and then just a blue, like a navy blue corduroy, um, sort, sort of needle cord, I think it's called because it's quite thin. Somebody suggested, and I'm really sorry I didn't make a note of your name, but thank you so much. Somebody suggested using it to make the Nina Lee Camden skirt. Now, I've made the Camden pinafore before. I've made a couple of those and I absolutely love that pattern, but I haven't ever just sewn up the skirt. But that's what I'm going to do with this fabric. Um, and I think that's a really lovely suggestion. So thank you. I hadn't really considered turning it into a skirt. And I really like the um, style of the Camden pinafore because although it's fitted, it's not hugely fitted. So it is going to feel quite comfortable because that's something that I have to really consider around my tummy area. Um, and it's not super fitted. So there's still going to be a little bit of room for like moving around and things. So I'm going to use the cotton for the lining and then the corduroy for the main skirt. And that is going to be something that I get cut out later on today as well. I've got lots of cutting out to do, but I'll just um, either put the radio on or put something on to watch and just have a cutting out session. I don't mind when I batch cut. If I've got it in my head that that's what I'm going to do, then I don't mind doing it. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that sewn up. In the video when I shared these bundles, I also said that I might turn it into a cocoa jacket um, and somebody um, commented, and I'm really sorry that I didn't say in the video that I have managed to get the cocoa jacket out of a metre before. This fabric, this corduroy is quite wide, I think it's like 1.4 metres wide. And if you've got quite a wide fabric, you can definitely get the sew over it cocoa jacket out of a metre. Um, I managed to get it out of less than a metre, I think, just with some, some um, sort of careful placement of the pattern pieces. So that's what I'm planning to do with these two fabrics. So thank you so much for the suggestions. So quite a busy week, actually, quite a lot of things that I want to plan to do today. And then I'll have projects over the next couple of weeks. So the other thing that I've been working on this week, which I thought I would share a little bit now, but I'll probably talk a lot more in my June mates video, or maybe I'll do just a video about just this dress if anyone finds that interesting. Um, so I've got the By Hand London Hannah wrap dress which I absolutely adore. I've seen so many absolutely beautiful versions of this dress and I've wanted to sew it up for ages. Now, I've had this pattern for ages. I got it as a PDF, printed it myself, stuck it all together and then I cut it out of a double gauze that came in a Sew Hayley Jane box, made it up and I really didn't like it. It fit really badly um and yeah i ended up chopping it up and turning it into something else it just looked awful on me and it, i really did not enjoy um trying it on or anything i put it down to the double gauze and also um just having to do some fitting sort of tweaks to the pattern and um, put the pattern away because i ended up using other wrap dress patterns um, but I've seen so many beautiful versions of this dress that I wanted to give it another try. So I've dug it out again, but I bought the paper pattern because I thought also that maybe it was me sticking it together and I'd stuck it together a bit skew with and, you know, not very accurately, which I know can happen when you're sticking PDFs together. So anyway, I've bought the paper pattern and I've traced it out, gone off my measurements and my measurements put me in a US six UK 10 because my high bust is a 32 inch and my bust is a 34 inch my waist is 27 inches the only measurement that was different was my hips but because it's a wrap dress I didn't really think it mattered with the hip area um, and I could always grade down for that hip area if I wanted to um, with the toile I decided to toile it and I'm really glad that I did because I'm still not really happy with the fit um, I might pop it on so I can show you what I mean with the fit. So bear with me whilst I go and get changed. Okay, I'm back. So I've twirled it using this fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine ages ago. Now, um, for me, I'm showing far too much. I don't feel comfortable with um, how sort of booby this dress is. But I don't know if it's... 
that's the style and I just need to get used to the way that that feels but I mean I would never wear this dress to work anyway because it's too um yeah I just feel like I'm too exposed there but the thing that I notice is I don't know if you're going to be able to see it properly but this is the bust dart and it's just far too high so I need to lower the bust dart not so much on the other side which is really interesting but it is still too high so that's where the bust dart is there but this one is way up here um so that's the first thing i need to do i need to lower both of those bust darts and then we've got some um darts here which i feel like they're in a better position this one isn't i don't think but anyway i need to play around with the darts um it's not gaping it is sitting really close to my bust but I just need to think about whether I like the feel of that. And if I don't, then I may end up adding some extra to it. Um, the shoulder seam sits where it should do, which is nice. So I think it is just around the how how open this V is um, and definitely changing the bust starts. If I stand up so you can see, um, I love the gathers. Um, it's got pockets, which is really nice. And I feel like the, the waist could possibly could possibly do with this is my natural waist I feel like I might extend the bodice by a maybe a, an inch but I don't know yeah I don't know anyway I need to play around with it basically um but this is what it looks like at the moment I feel like everything else fits apart from the bust darts so I need to play around with the bust darts um, and then possibly trace off the next size up and see if I feel happier with the coverage of the next size up for the bodice. Keep the skirt as it is, but the bodice I would perhaps size up to the 8, 12 um, and see what the fit is like on that and definitely ad adjust the bust darts. Um, but yeah, this fabric I've had in my stash for ages. I absolutely loved it. I think it was like six pounds a meter or something from semi sunshine this is twirl at number one i'm gonna have a play around and i don't think i'll make the entire dress again but i'm just gonna twirl the bodice again um and just play around with the bust starts and perhaps size up like i said on the body uh, a more comfortable wrap for me um i'd be interested to hear your thoughts if you have made this do you find that the the wrap is quite exposed is it something that I just need to get used to with the design? It's really difficult to tell because on some people it does look, you know, like you're quite exposed. And then on other people, um, this is when I've had a look at the hashtag, other people, they don't look quite so exposed. So I don't know, maybe I just need to get used to um, that feeling of maybe having a bit more chest on show. Um, but I know that I definitely need to adjust the bust starts. So that is what I'm going to do on the next twirl. So I just thought to let you know that is what I've been getting up to. So I hope you enjoyed that style of video. I'm going to try and bring one out every Sunday evening um, just to sew and catch up to let you know what I've been getting up to. Some weeks I will have sewn more than other weeks, but even if I just share some plans and ideas that I've had going around in my head, um, I love being able to talk about sewing. My husband isn't particularly interested. He'll listen but it's not the same as having um, interaction with you guys because I love getting your comments and hearing what you're getting up to too and if you have suggestions and things for me. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos but also to comment. I really do love hearing from you and this week I'm definitely carving out some time to reply to all of you. So thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, it's been a busy week um, during the day as I've been taking my girls out and just spending time with them as a family. So thank you so much for your patience with me replying. I do really love hearing from you. Do let me know what you're getting up to. What's the next project that you've got lined up for cutting out or for sewing? Um, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.